Hey guys, it's Bree here from Blossom and Branch Farm. It is very cold today. I think we hit a high of negative six and it was negative 27 with wind chill last night. Very cold. And I just wanted to pop in and give you the details on our cattle panel tunnel because I've been promising to do it for a long time and I'm finally getting to it. Now this is the tunnel that I call the bomb proof tunnel. So it is so indestructible. Um, every time that we've had windstorms, snowstorms, things that have knocked over other farmers' tunnels in the area, this guy stands strong without even having to knock it off. And that has to do with the fact that the cattle panels distribute weight and force much better than a hoop house would, where uh, the hoops are spaced six maybe feet apart. This has a continuous mesh on the inside, so the weight is much more distributed. So I'm gonna pop inside where it's a little bit warmer to show you all the details of the construction of this tunnel. And the really great thing about this style of a tunnel is that in the summer, we can take off this film and we can grow in it as an arbor or a trellis. So we've used it for pumpkins in the past, climbing flowers, and all we have to do is remove this plastic. We store it over the summer and then we put it back on in the winter time. Now you do have to be careful with the placement of the plastic and you'll see that when we're putting it on uh, exactly <laughs> that you need to be careful to label which end is which and that way it'll line up when you go to put it on the next time. You could alternatively, if you wanted to, you could make these ends out of something else, like a polycarbonate. You could use a polycarbonate to make the ends and then just put the plastic on and off on the sides. It's really a flexible structure. All right, people often ask about these end walls and how we framed them. We really didn't do anything fancy. We just bought a door from Habitat for Humanity and we actually cut it down so that it was short enough to fit inside. Now, the height of your tunnel is going to depend on how close together you you put the ends. So if you pull these ends in closer, your tunnel is going to be taller, then you could accommodate a taller door, but you won't have as much growing space inside. So that's why we went with this width, just because that was um, that allowed us to fit a door and I can walk in there, and yet it's still enough growing space. So this is six feet from this two by six here to the other two by six on the other side, it's six feet total, which basically allows me a walkway and then two rows to plant in. So here's the inside. This is a 32 foot long tunnel and it is 32 feet long because we have eight uh, cattle panels that are about four feet wide hooked together here. So a real quick overview on the structure. This end is a door that we got at Habitat for Humanity. This is the door end. On the opposite end is the window end. And when we need to ventilate, we open both of these so we get a good cross flow here. This you can see is the southern orientation. So you can see how there's light coming in evenly all day on this end. So you wanna orient so that the long end of your tunnel is facing south. So to look at this frame a little bit closely, you can see that we bought a door and having this jam on it just makes it easier. We don't have to install hinges or anything like that. That was all already on the jam. We just frame that in with two by fours around the outside. And then we also have two by fours spanning across the base. To come down and look a little bit more in detail, we have this two by four spanning the bottom and we have some lateral bracing right here. This is just screwed into these two by fours and this just provides a little bit of extra stability. We have attached to the two by fours our two by sixes. So the two by sixes are what span all the way across on both ends of the tunnel. And these two by sixes are held in place on the outside with rebar. And that rebar helps keep this from bowing out. So when we get pressure from snow loads like we have today, having the, that rebar reinforcement on the outside of those two by sixes prevents it from bowing outward. It helps hold its structure in place. The other thing that helps with snow loads are these two by fours you see right here. We just made a T, so there's a little flat piece on the bottom. One two by four that goes all the way up and it's just sitting right underneath that cattle panel there to help give a little bit of extra snow support in case we need it. And we have gotten up to two feet of snow. The structure sheds it really well without having to dust it off. So you can see also that we've attached our cattle panels to these two by sixes and we use something called fence staples. So we just hammer these fence staples into place to hold these cattle panels where they are. Each cattle panel is held to its neighboring cattle panel with a UV rated zip tie. You wanna use UV rated because this is gonna be in the sun 
Uh, UV rays can break down traditional zip ties. The UV rated ones hold up much better. And then the other thing we've done here on the cattle panel itself is we have sliced a piece of plastic tubing in half and slid it over the edge of the cattle panel. That's because here where these little T's are in the metal, there can be a little sharp edge on the outside. And if that sharp edge red rubs on this plastic, it can create holes. So we don't want holes in our plastic because we do reuse it every year. If you do get little holes, it's not a big deal. You can just patch it with some greenhouse plastic tape that's specifically made for low temperatures. You can see here that we have two layers of plastic on. This is actually an overwintering film, and this is our eight mil greenhouse plastic that's really nice and heavy duty. All right, let's go down to the opposite end and take a look at the window. So you can see we've spaced our supports here about every uh, eight feet. We have three of them here. And then down on this end, we constructed a window. This is very basic. Now we have one two by four that spans from the top all the way down. We have one two by four that spans across from the bottom and over. Some lateral bracing here for this window. And then we framed in one more two by four here to frame in this little window. This window is also very basic. Two by four frame here. And the greenhouse plastic is held in place by these one by twos. So we attach these one by twos to the two by four. You can see the plastic is right in between and we just screw these one by twos onto the two by four and that holds this plastic in place. We have a little latch here that we can open and shut and you can see that we've attached the plastic on the outside the same way. So we just pull it over, we attach a one by two to that inside framing and we screw on to hold this plastic in place. So this is why I said earlier, it's important to try to label uh, which side is which on your plastic so that each year you're putting it back on and it's gonna line up about with the old screw holes. But if you wanted to do something fancier on the ends, you could do plywood, you could do polycarbonate, really you could do any of those things. Um, this is just what we decided to go with. And there are some edges up here, so when I put the plastic on, I'm going to make sure that I have a barrier here because otherwise this is going to rub and it could create holes in the plastic. So I'll show you what we use. It's nothing fancy. <laughs> These are just rubber stair treads that we had um, from inside our house. And it's been on the ground, just so it's dirty. But it's just a rubber stair tread. And so we put this over the top here and that prevents rubbing from happening right here. So that's all this is, it's really nothing fancy. We did it. We put every piece on backwards and upside down, but we did it. So next year I will label so I know which sides go where. Um, the next step, is we're gonna do when it gets a little bit lighter, but the next step is to attach this plastic. So we use one by twos or two by twos. You could use either one. We actually use one by twos on the ends, on the end doors. So you can see this plastic, I still have to adjust it a little bit. But this film comes over and first we attach along the ends. This film comes over and we use the one by twos to screw it and attach it to the door frame here. So we attach it to the door frame with these one by twos, which is how we hold it in place. And we do the same thing here along the bottoms. So here along the bottoms, we actually use two by twos. So we have these eight foot two by twos. And what we'll do, once we have everything aligned correctly, I'm gonna go in and these sit right on top of those two by sixes underneath. So here's the two by sixes underneath. We put the fabric on, the plastic, and then we'll screw these two bys down onto that two by six, these two by twos. So that's how we secure the plastic in place. We'll screw these all along both ends and that makes it really secure. So this has never blown off with the wind. Uh, we've never had any issues with it blowing around. Even though we've had 85 mile an hour winds here, 
on the front range. We get pretty windy. All right, I hope that this is helpful for you to see how we did the cattle panel. Um, it's really nice because in the spring, what it allows me to do is I keep these sides rolled down and as it starts getting uh, closer to last frost, we can actually start our squash seeds and other cold sensitive things in here because they have a little bit of extra protection and then they have a little jump start on the season so they get growing a lot faster, which is important in a cold, short growing zone like mine. All right, guys, let me know if you're going to give this a try or if you've grown like this before and if there's anything you would do differently. Otherwise, if you liked it, subscribe and like and share. Thanks all. See you later.